Welcome back, YouTube. I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas and will have a Happy New Year. If you are new here, hi, my name is Noah. I'm a spiritualist and on my channel we talk about death, true crime, spiritual reparations, haunted people, places, and things, and how you can fuck around and find out. If you are not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and subscribe now. If you are here, turn on your notifications bell, please. Thank you. Today's episode, we are going to be talking about the infamous game, the Ouija board. Now, there's a lot of things as a spiritualist that I will dabble in. I will try everything once, but I will never, ever bring a Ouija board into my home, into my space. You know, a friend of mine was trying to get me to use a spirit board and some of my spirits was just like, mm, I don't think so. And it's for good reason. Please, 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 you may hear me tell you a story, but I will never tell you a lie. Stay away from Ouija boards. For those who have been living under a rock, what is a Ouija board, you ask? A Ouija board is a board that has A, B, C through Z on it. Yes, no, hello, goodbye. It is a way that occultists now communicate with spirits, but it wasn't always that. It was just a popular parlor game, but once the Civil War happened, people wanted to connect with their dearly departed because a lot of their bodies were never recovered. But if you know what a Ouija board is, you know how dangerous this is because you are going through portals, my love. More than likely, 99.9% .9 of the time, you will not connect with your dearly departed. You will either get some sort of low vibrational spirit, a D word, y'all know I don't like saying that in my house, or something that is very, very harmful and dangerous. So that's why I say never play with a Ouija board. If you play with a Ouija board, that's your business. A Ouija board doesn't always work. Sometimes you are just highly protected. Sometimes it just, it's not for you. Sometimes your ancestors be doing what they supposed to do and blocking off the things that aren't meant for you. So if you play with a Ouija board and you see this, I don't need y'all arguing with me in the comments. I literally do not care. But what I will say is, is that me as a spiritualist and in my own practice and being in this realm for years, don't use it, please. Thank you. I love y'all down. So let's get into it. How this video is going to go. I'm going to read a couple of stories that I found online. Most of them coming from Reddit. I will link the original article because there was a website that so kindly put all of these into a compilation. I will be linking it. I love to give credit where credit is due. So you'll be able to read them for yourself. I'm also going to be adding some TikToks in there just to double down on why y'all should not fuck with this. Because if you fuck with it, you're going to find out. Out. sorry it, it just that's just how it is so let's get started this story was submitted by a reddit user named no springs it says i was about 12 or 13 spending the night at a friend's house goofing around with the ouija board with him and his sister we were all getting sorts of gibberish plus words spelled out just kind of scaring ourselves for fun not taking it very seriously then we got the message, I can see you through the window. And then I can see you through his eyes or something like that. There was just a small window in the basement room where we were and just the backyard and woods past the driveway visible through that window. We asked him more questions and it said, I'm under the car. So we somehow got up the nerve to go out with a flashlight and peer under the car where we see a huge black stray cat hissing. We ran inside freaking out and that was the exact moment the power failed and all the lights went out in the house. We were about to actually shit ourselves. A few minutes later, the power came back and we sat up until dawn that night, scared and never played with that board again. That was a mild story because how? This is why I keep telling y'all to leave shit alone. Don't mess with Ouija boards. This next story was submitted by a user that's named Turtle Shell Magic. My two best friends, M and L for this story, and I played the Ouija board at M's house. It was going fine until M asked the spirit how it had died and it said murder. She asked how it had been murdered and it said not I. It gave its name as something older than I can no longer remember and gave us a date in the 1800s. It started to get heavy. The whole room felt different. 
and the little thing on the board was ripped out of our hands and went across the room. We stopped playing immediately after that. Probably a coincidence, but Elle's mom was hospitalized for a serious drinking problem not long after that, and then mine's had an emergency hysterectomy the same week. I have since then experienced things I don't think I would have without this experience. Voices, a dark shadow, footsteps. I wonder if I'm haunted sometimes still, and it's been nine years. Let me tell you something. When it comes to these Ouija boards, they don't stop, okay? Whatever spirit, whatever malevolent spirit that you happen to come across are going to continuously torment you because you've opened a portal that was never supposed to be opened, okay? There are hundreds, if not thousands, probably thousands of stories just like this of people who use this Ouija board a decade before and are still feeling the effects of it today. Seek divination for those people. This next story was submitted by a user named Ouija 1993. It says, I was over at a friend's house back in the early 90s. I believe I was in the ninth grade at the time. There were four of us, myself and three other girls. They kept asking me if I wanted to play with the Ouija board because they've been talking to some dude named Roger on it. Excuse me? I was totally skeptical at first. I wasn't buying it, totally thought they were moving the planchette until I asked the board a question that only I knew. We had just gotten our grades from school back that day and I asked it what I got in science. I remember this clearly and I know my friends did not know the answer. The board spelled out my grade. Of course, that piped my interest so I started asking it more questions. And why would you do that? I can't really recall the details of that night other than the board kept calling one of my friends a bitch and hated her. It liked me. His name was Roger and he was stabbed to death. At one point, I was the only one controlling the board and asking questions. It worked. The freakiest thing that ever happened to me. I'm not super spiritual. I've never seen anything else paranormal related and I feel like I'm very rational. All I know is that something supernatural was controlling that board without a doubt. And what if Roger was really a D word? You have to be very careful, okay? Yeah, you got the nice guy, Roger, that got stabbed to death. But next time you can get Bathsheba. The next story comes from a Reddit user named Hammerhands. It says, we were hanging out in a friend's dorm and busted out the Ouija board. There were a few of us who had used them before and a few of us who hadn't that were quite skeptical. It was about 11 p.m. and the communication with the board was going quite well. Gary, one of the skeptics, kept calling bullshit to the whole thing. We convinced him to sit on the floor with us and give it a shot. His first question, is this for real or just a bunch of bullshit? The planchette zipped to no. Fine, he says, still not believing it. Prove it. Are you trying to go to fuck around town, Gary? I, I, I think you are. No sooner had he finished that statement when the lights in the room flickered and the building's fire alarm went off. This freaked us all out. We left the room to follow the fire alarm procedures. After about 20 minutes, campus safety said it was a false alarm and let us all back into the dorms. When we arrived back up to our friend's room, the Ouija board was gone. No one took it with us and the room was left locked. Okay, quick story time because this reminded me of something that my friend who had the spirit board that tried to convince me of it told me. So she works at a place that gets a lot of donations. Someone donated a Ouija board. And of course, everyone in the building except for her was afraid of the Ouija board. So she threw it away. Okay. They threw the Ouija board away. The coworker, her coworker did. And whenever her coworker came in for the, the next shift, the next morning, that Ouija board literally was sitting on her desk. The next story is submitted by a Reddit user who goes by the handle Godspeed29. And they say, once right after my ex had lost his friend in an airplane accident, we took the Ouija board out to use it. She was very present. She was very scared and alone and desperate for communication. We stopped using it and immediately I felt the presence in the corner of the room. I closed my eyes to take a deep breath. Suddenly, the pointer started moving rapidly around and going too fast to spell out words. It was terrifying. I refused to use the Ouija board again. 
I immediately felt exhausted, completely and utterly drained. I laid down and had a nap. I was asleep for exactly 30 minutes. I woke up, bolted out of bed. I closed my eyes for a second to adjust myself to where I was, and I saw this spirit slash skeletal thing standing in the corner of my room. It suddenly rushed at my face and started screaming at me with a big gaunt mouth. I opened my eyes and started screaming at my boyfriend to get it off me. I could feel it, so oppressive and aggressive, trying to get on slash in me. I ran from the house screaming and shaking. I don't think I'll ever use a Ouija board again. One day it disappeared from my bedroom. It completely vanished. I have never found it. I have no explanations for what happened to it. Please, please leave those things alone. This next story was submitted by a user named Arabella. It says, when I was around 12 to 14 years old, one girl bought a Ouija board to my friend's birthday slash slumber party. I was pretty skeptical, but also really curious about it as I had never had one before. We took turns asking questions and I just figured someone else was moving the planchette. The other girls were pretty creeped out, but it wasn't until it answered a question for me that nobody else knows the answer to. To this day, I can't explain how that answer appeared or any of the other paranormal experiences that happened after we put the board away. I truly believe that we contacted something and it stuck around. There were generally just a lot of small things like footsteps above us when we were on the top floor. The door kept swinging open on its own, and the girl who lived there said it never did that on its own before then. The creepiest part was that a bunch of us randomly woke up around 4 or 5 in the morning, and a few girls saw a black figure walking down on the street outside of the window. Apparently, one of the girls had seen what they thought was the same figure with his face at the window on a second story. Baby, if I see a face and I'm on the second story, I'm going home. Call my parents. I don't want to be here anymore. This next one was a little creepy, but it needs to be told, okay? This is submitted by the Reddit user named The Tree Man, and it says, when I was little, my mom took out a Ouija board and asked my brother and I if we'd like to play with it. It started out pretty funny. Someone was obviously moving the glass thing, making words like poop and stuff like that. Did I mention we were young enough for that to be hilarious? But then my mom said, let's get serious and try to contact someone. Here's where it gets weird. A friend of hers had recently gone missing. He had been missing for a month or so and nobody knew where he was. When we asked who it was we were talking to, his name was spelled out. Let's just say it was George since I genuinely don't remember. When we asked George if he was my mom's friend, he said yes. My mom got visibly upset and asked where he was. In a lake was spelt out. It was extremely upsetting and we stopped immediately. Mom tried to be lighthearted about it and since I was young, I believed it was no big deal as well, following her lead. About two weeks later, they found George's body. He'd been hit by a car or a train or something like that on a bridge and his body fell into a nearby lake, though it was more like a very large pond. It was reasonably remote. So nobody had found it for a while. Okay, so that is one example of the Ouija board actually contacting the person it was supposed to. That does not mean that I would recommend this still. It is very much so still very, very dangerous. It promotes poltergeist-like activity in your house. So this family fortunately got lucky and this character, George, wanted to be found. This next part of the video has some TikTok videos from users who have experienced this Ouija board, whether that be through protection or they heard a paraki, whatever the case is, they have experienced something or heard something about a Ouija board. And I thought these were very interesting. First one came from a user whose handle is Smushy Smashy. And she tells a story about a time that her ancestors, spirit guides, and the Most High protected her from a Ouija board. Just watch. So this is my second time trying to tell this story. I'm not gonna do all those cuts and fancy thing that people on TikTok do. I'm just gonna tell the story. So when I was 18 or 19, um, I 
was with my mom. We I'm from a small city in Illinois, Southern Illinois, basically. And um, we were riding around one day and we happened to come across this um, yard sale. So she wanted to stop and I said, okay, let's, you know, let's go see what they got. So we get there and you can tell everything that had been laying on the table, um, everything was basically covered in like a fine layer of dust. Um, so either it was in an attic or a garage or something, I don't know. But I was looking on the tables and I saw an Ouija board. Um, it was fully intact. It had in the, on the inside of the box, it had the, the board and the planchette. Um, so I asked my mom if I could have it and she said, yeah. And so took it home. Um, fast forward to maybe six months. I never opened it by the way. So fast forward six months, I get my own place, I box it up and I put it in the utility closet. Um, fast forward another three months, I finally uh, remember that I have the Ouija board. So I was already out. I'm like, okay, well, I'm just gonna stop and pick up like this cheap bottle of vodka and I'm gonna go home and play with the board. So I get home and remind you, I had stored my box in a utility closet. So I open up the utility closet and I guess the water heater that was in it had uh, leaked or something. But I had it stored in a um, in a just a regular cardboard box. Completely soaked the box and everything that was in it, including the Ouija board. Completely warped the board. It was ruined. I couldn't use it, so I had no choice but to throw it away. Well, next day I call out maintenance to have them come look at the water heater because I don't want it to continue to leak. And they come out. They open up the utility closet, they poke around, look around. Um, they said that they couldn't find a leak. So, I don't know, was it some sort of intervention or something? Because like I said, I had a bottle of liquor and it was ready to go. Listen, that wasn't nothing but God. Because you shouldn't even been playing with it. And I'm glad that it got destroyed by water. Now go bury it. Next video is a submission on TikTok by a user named Tatiana. And by the way, I will be linking all of the creators in the description of this video so that you can give them a follow. But she talks about a time that she played with a Ouija board and more than likely got a low vibrational spirit. Okay, I am going to be taking the sound out of this video because I keep getting in trouble on YouTube for people's sounds. I don't want the drama, but just look at this. Whatever she encountered on that board sounds like either a trickster spirit or something low vibrational. I don't believe that this was an actual person. Okay. So take what this thing told you with a grain of salt, Tatiana. Heaven is absolutely what you think it is. Next story comes from a user with the handle Letty Loves You. And she has an interesting story that she heard on a Mexican podcast about a 16 year old who was playing with a Ouija board. <sighs> just, just listen. A 16 year old girl wanted to know if her boyfriend was cheating on her. So she bought a Ouija board. Yeah, you heard that right. And just so you know, this story gets crazier. So this girl brings the Ouija board home and plays with it by herself. The first question she asked the Ouija board is, do you want to play with me? In which the Ouija board responds, yes. She said she had suspicions of her boyfriend cheating on her and she wanted to know the truth. So she asked the Ouija board, is my boyfriend cheating on me? To which the Ouija board replied, Yes, she then asked the Ouija board, do you know if this girl has a phone number? To which, of course, the Ouija board replied, yes. She asked the Ouija board if he can give her the girl's number, and it starts giving her a phone number, which she starts writing down on a piece of paper. So after writing down this phone number, she decides to ask the Ouija board if it knows the girl's name, and it gave her the name of Nayeli Ortiz. She immediately leaves the Ouija board, goes to get her phone, and call the number. When she calls, a man answers, and she asks if she can speak with Nayeli. Ortiz. The man stays a little quiet and he's like, uh, 
yes, but what is this about? And the girl's like, oh, I'm just a friend. Can I just speak with her? To which the man stays quiet on the phone again and says, well, here's the thing. There is a girl named Nayeli Ortiz here, but she's two years old. So how can she have a friend? So after that, the girl's realizing that the Nayeli Ortiz the guy's talking about is two years old and not another 16 year old girl. She apologizes and gets off the phone immediately. So she goes back to the Ouija board and asks why it would give her a name of a two year old girl and not another 16 year old girl that her boyfriend's cheating on her with. The Ouija board responds, that little girl is going to die. In which she says, why? Why is she going to die? And the Ouija board spells out, I'm going to take her. So at this point, the girl's like, no, stop playing with me. You're scaring me and decides to stop playing the Ouija board. So she stopped playing the Ouija board. The following day, she gets very curious and she still has the phone number. So she decides to call. So she calls the number, the same guy answers and she asks to speak with Nayeli Ortiz. Except this time the guy cussed her out and told her how insensitive it is and how rude it is for her to be asking about his daughter when she had just died that morning and he hung up on her. So after that, she just couldn't believe that happened. Like the Ouija board said the girl was gonna die. The girl actually dies. And she just thinks it's a dream. Like this couldn't have happened to her. So at this point, years have passed and she's still in disbelief that this could have happened to her and the way it happened to her. So she gets curious again and she wants to go look for the phone number that's in her wallet so that she can call again and maybe get more information this time. Except for that phone number that's on a piece of paper is no longer in her wallet and she could never find it again. At this point, she still had the Ouija board and she hid it under her bed and she claims that every time they would clean or something, that Ouija board would reappear like in the middle of her bedroom, almost like it wanted her to play with it again. Um, it got so bad that the dad ended up burning that Ouija board and she mentions buying another one. She bought another one because she wanted to continue to play with it. I don't know, man. I feel like I would have just contacted one of my best friends would have given me all the information I needed to know if my boyfriend was cheating on me or not. Also, she didn't even give us an update if her boyfriend was cheating on her or not. <laughs> and that's how it ends, basically. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it because I feel like that shit is scary. And if anything, that happening would make me not want to play with the Ouija board again. By the way, this story was originally in Spanish and it's in one of those podcasts where people can call in and tell them their scary story. So if I find the original creator, I will tag them in the, in the caption because I don't think where I saw it is the original person like the original podcast people. But if I do find it, it'll be in the comments. But what the hell do you guys think about this story? Now, if that ain't weird and sad, I don't know what is. Stop playing with these boards. I don't know. You know, people always say when it's your time to go, you know, whatever the case is. But the fact that this board was communicating and giving her phone numbers and names to babies that had no chance against dark forces. It's weird. This next story is submitted by a TikTok user named vampish virgo and she tells about a time that she was in group therapy and one of her fellow group therapy members had been placed there because they thought that he was trying to kill himself when really he had been playing with the ouija board just watch this is by far the scariest story i've ever heard in my entire life so when i was in high school i used to do group therapy and there's specifically this one boy who had a giant laceration across his throat and i guess his father passed away and his mom's sister and him were so grief stricken that they decided to use a ouija board to try to talk to him <clears throat> and i guess the experience went fine whatever well one day his mom and his sister were out of the house and he said i want to use the ouija board by myself i really want to talk to my dad well, he starts to use the Ouija board by himself, and he's like a younger kid while he's doing this. Something came through the board that was so evil, it overtook his mind, his body, everything, and he says like the last thing he remembers is whatever the entity was that overtook him, literally getting him to slice his neck open with a knife. Like it was terrifying. And of course, no doctors or physicians believed him, so they threw him in an institution, right? Um, but I'll tell you, you did believe him. I did. And so did my, uh, the woman who ran the uh, group therapy. You know why? Because she was a shaman. She was a shaman. She was like, holy fuck. And I was like, holy fuck. This next video was also uploaded to TikTok. There is some debate if this video is real or not. 
to me that that scream sounded real but it's of a couple of friends sitting in a circle playing with a Ouija board y'all let me know if this is real or fake YouTube users and people that are YouTube university goers pretty much can tell me if something's fake or real but that scream was like gut-wrenching like she was severely terrified so y'all watch and let me know y'all opinion okay oh my god The girl screaming seemed absolutely terrified. That's just my opinion. And most people who scream this way, I don't know. It looks real to me, but I don't know. Okay, there was several times that I uploaded stuff on here and I got like emails like, oh, that's not real or emails or comments of people who were trying to fuck around and find out and make it to my block list because they weren't kind. I find these videos online, so just let me know if you know if this is real or not. This last video comes from a user whose handle on TikTok is Vanity. Um, she, it's a three-parter, and I'm gonna add all three parts, but she tells about the time that her and her friends were playing with a Ouija board and got a disturbing, very common, low vibrational d word that responded i hope it's not nighttime wherever you are because this story is why i no longer touch ouija boards mistakes were made quick disclaimer this happened about seven or eight years ago when i was a dumb 17 year old so some of the details are a little bit fuzzy but the important parts are floating around in there it was a dark and stormy evening just kidding it was like the middle of the day in the suburbs and two of my friends asked me to come over to one of their homes because one of them had a ouija board but every time she used it only one thing would come through and that thing called itself Mama. So I was the weird creepy friend of the group who was into tarot and supernatural ghosts and ghouls and all of that, so they invited me over so that I could try to use the board and maybe give them my input on what I thought was going on and who this Mama was. So knowing almost nothing but thinking I knew everything because I was 17, I went over to their house and we used the Ouija board. I will say, we followed all the rules and we took it very seriously, we never treated it like a joke, but I was less protected than I would like to be nowadays. So I began the session by stating we were ready and willing to communicate respectfully with any present spirits and that if they wanted to make their presence known, they could move the planchette to yes. Almost immediately, the planchette straight to yes. Now, if you've ever used boards before, you know that that's kind of unusual unless one of your friends is messing with you and moving it themselves. It normally takes a while to get going once you put that message out there, uh, kind of like your matches on Tinder but it shot straight to yes. So I followed up by asking, what is your name? And it's spelled M-A-M-A, -M -A, Mama. Immediately, I got this tingly feeling that was not great and the air felt kind of heavy and staticky. I don't know if my friends were feeling it, but I was, but they kind of had looks on their faces like, like they were maybe feeling it or they were just really creeped out. The way I describe the energy is like if you've ever been around when something really bad happened, like somebody broke a bone or got hit by a car, both of which have happened right in front of me, um, you know the feeling in the air is like charged electrically with a really icky feeling. It was exactly that feeling. So I start asking more questions. How old are you? How did you get here? Did you live here? Etc. And a lot of the answers I'm getting, I'm feeling kind of bullshit. I can't describe it. It was just a feeling I had. Another thing to note was that when it wasn't actively answering a question, the planchette was moving in figure eights. I then asked if any other spirits were present and it said yes. I asked how many, and it said either three or four. I don't remember the exact number, but I do remember that the answer was yes. So I said, will you let any other spirits communicate? And it immediately jumped to no. I'm sensing whatever this is is extremely controlling and overbearing, and it's been lying. At some point, I was feeling a little brave, and I decided to ask, how old are you really? It paused, and the planchette slowly moved to zero. I asked, how old are you really? It paused, and the planchette slowly moved to zero. Even though I was a dumb 17-year-old, I knew that was not good. So it was time to abort mission, close session. Again, because I was stupid, um, I decided to continue engaging. And I said, will you let us speak to any of the other present entities? And it said, no. I said, okay, well, we're ready to close the session. 
would you like to say goodbye? And it said, nope. So as if I was talking to some little kid, I said, well, if you're not gonna let us talk to anybody else, we're gonna have to say goodbye. And it just went, no, 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 no. <laughs> so that's when I decided being kind and patient was not working anymore and I needed to be stern and direct. So I stated, you have no power here. We are controlling the session and we are ready to say goodbye. So my friend and I began to move the planchette to goodbye. And I don't know if she remembers this as vividly as I do, but I swear it felt like something was magnetically pulling against as we were pushing it towards goodbye. And I knew it was not her moving it because she looked just about as scared shitless as I was. Also, this was not the kind of friend to play pranks like that. So we had to push the planchette over the words goodbye and we said goodbye. And the feeling kind of went once the staticky, icky feeling went away, I looked at my friends and I told them, this is really not good. Even though I was 17 and stupid, I knew enough to know that if something says it is zero years old, that means it has never existed on this earth. And when it said it was zero, that was the only time I genuinely felt it was answering candidly. Also, it made me kind of want to throw up a little bit. I told my friend I thought that whatever it was was really negative, potentially demonic, and that it had essentially tainted this board, that it was spoiled, that nothing else could come through because it had left a stain on this portal essentially is what they are. And she could never use it without only that entity coming through. And I told her if she wasn't careful and she accidentally permitted it to manifest itself outside of the board, she was inviting it into her home. So my advice was to get rid of it, never use one again, and especially never ever ever take one inside of your home. And that was essentially it. She did what I told her. Years went by, I stopped thinking about it until one day I saw an article titled Zozo the Ouija Demon, also known as Mama. Okay, so I won't even go into Zozo, okay? That's the last time I'm saying it in my house. But this being is supposedly something that was born a long, long, long time ago when people were doing the the dark magics and things like that. Um, I am familiar with it with my research in this video, but sometimes it does like to be called mama or try to trick you into thinking it is a benevolent spirit when it's absolutely a malevolent, low vibrational, dirty D word. So please, please, please be careful. That is all for today's video. I want to truly take the time out and thank everybody who supported me this year. This will be my last video of the year of 2023. And I just really, from the bottom of my heart, wanted to thank everyone who supported me on TikTok, my TikTok family. Them is my day ones. I have over 200,000 followers over there. My YouTube family who showed up, like literally pulled up and gave me 45,000 plus followers subscribers out of nowhere my first video was on Halloween and here we are not even a full two months later baby and we are already almost 46,000 subscribers strong I also want to give a shout out to my patrons on Patreon. If you did not know, I teach hoodoo on there and they love and support me. And I truly appreciate every single like, every single comment, whether it's good or bad, every single suggestion. I love y'all down, baby. And if you have a suggestion, which a lot of you guys have emailed me, okay? A lot of y'all have, and I got... I'm going to say y'all for the new year because some of y'all gave me some piping hot tea that I need to share with the world, okay? But if you have a haunted story, a spiritual reparation story, a true crime story that you would like me to cover and recite, I will do it for you. So please email me. I'm going to leave all of my socials in the description of this video as well as I'm going to pin it so that you don't miss it. Again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your support during the year of 2023. And I cannot wait for all the good things that the Black Cauldron has for the year of 2024. I wish you, your family, your kinfolk, nothing but wealth, prosperity, protection, and happiness in the new year. Y'all be safe.